Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Trail News. Trail News is meant to be a short video which showcases a few trail-related articles that I find useful to share. These are articles I've found or that viewers submitted to me. Our top story today comes from McHenry County Conservation District's website. There are some resurfacing and improvement projects running on the Prairie Trail between June and September. And it's not just the resurfacing, they're making many improvements on the trail and they're also updating the trailheads. I've ridden the Prairie Trail through Stearns Woods many, many, many times. And it's definitely in need of improvement, so this is good news. But it's not just Stearns Woods, they're also resurfacing and making improvements on the section between Hillside Road and Edgewood Road, just north of Stearns Woods. I imagine this construction will lead to some trail closures, although they do not mention it on the website. So if you plan on riding this section of the Prairie Trail between June and September, I would definitely check the website before going out. My next story involves the Des Plaines River Trail in Lake County. Multiple underpasses are currently closed due to flooding on the Des Plaines River. So if you're planning a ride on the Lake County portion of the Des Plaines River Trail, make sure to check their website before you go. In other news, later today there's going to be a public meeting regarding the Lake Cook Road path. It looks like that public meeting is between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. at a JCC in Northbrook. The Lake Cook Road path is essentially something I've wanted from the very first time I rode the Skokie Valley bike path four years ago. The goal is to make it safer to get between the Skokie Valley bike path on the west side and the Chicago Botanic Garden where it meets the North Branch Trail on the east side. Those unable to attend the meeting in person will have the ability to submit comments online. I'm in full support of making it safer to get from both of those trails, although I was disappointed to learn that construction is planned for 2027 or 2028. Welcome to a new segment in trail news that I call Trail Report. I do a lot of local rides where I'm not creating cynical zombie content. Every once in a while while I'm out on a ride, I find something interesting to share. So in those instances, I'll just whip out my phone and create a short video. My first trail report comes from Lakewood Forest Preserve in Wakanda, Illinois. Wakanda forever! Where myself and many other people learn the hard way that the main parking lot at Lakewood Forest Preserve is closed. This trail report is from the Millennium Trail at Lakewood Forest Preserve. If you tried to get into Lakewood Forest Preserve, like myself and several other cars we saw today, uh, the entrance on 176, you'd realize that uh, it's closed. So you can't get into Lakewood Forest Preserve. Uh, so my goal here was to check out what was going on. And uh, as you could see, they, they have it all torn up here and over here, this whole area. And then the parking lot that we park at is normally right here. So they have a uh, big construction equipment and it's all torn up here. But uh, we were able to verify between Fairfield Road and Route 176, we're able to ride through completely on the Millennium Trail. You just do not have access with a car right now. We just moved up a little. As you can see, this is the parking lot we normally park in right now. So there's the construction equipment this way. We parked at the Lakewood Forest Preserve entrance on Fairfield Road. So it wasn't actually very far we had to go to find another uh, parking spot with access to the trail. Uh, one of the things we noticed immediately upon entry of Lakewood Forest Preserve here is they ripped down the entire restroom here. So there is no longer a restroom here. I, I'm curious where they're gonna end up putting it. So here's the new fishing pier. Uh, area is closed for construction, not safe for public access. It looks very nice. The next trail report I have for you was from the same ride just a few hours later. Cynical Zombie with a trail report here. Uh, we are at the intersection of the Des Plaines River Trail. If you were to head uh, this way down here, you would make your way to Independence Grove Forest Preserve. Uh, over this way is the Casey Trail. So this time of year, anytime you ride the Des Plaines River Trail, you definitely need to check Lake County Forest Preserve's website. They'll show you where all of the closures are. So I was looking earlier today to check out what the closures were. And on their website, they have a map that shows uh, any sort of closures. So right now they're showing on the Des Plaines River Trail at Route 137, which is right over this way, they're showing that uh, the status of this underpass here is closed. 
Now, when I look at the sign here, the sign is actually saying the underpass is open. So I'm really hoping that it's open because our plan today was to come up to Independence Grove and do that little loop. So what we're gonna do is head down towards 137, hopefully be able to continue on to the North Shore bike path. If not, we're gonna, if it's actually closed, we're gonna have to make our way back and we're gonna have to head back tracking this way on the KC Trail. So uh, let's check it out. When you get to Route 137, we've encountered a caution trail damage ahead sign. Uh, so I'm not set up with all the GoPros and stuff because my intent wasn't to make a video today, but these little uh, trail report segments, I think some people will definitely find useful. So let's check this out here. All right, so it is definitely clear. So I have a hard time believing that uh, yesterday this was flooded. Move out of the way here. Okay, now granted, it is the 25th at 2.43 p.m. The last update on their website was about, what, 22-ish hours ago on 5.24 at 4.46 p.m. Uh, we do have the uh, caution trail damage ahead sign, but if you were planning a ride today on this Saturday and you were relying on the accuracy of that Lake County Forest Preserve map for status map, then you would have actually been quite disappointed because you would have actually changed your ride like we may have had to before we actually came down here to see it's completely passable. So now instead of having to backtrack, we're gonna be able to continue forward. There's people who probably did not even attempt it because the underpass was closed according to the website. So my suggestion of course is to keep that extremely accurate. If you open it on the sign that was behind us, uh, make sure you go to the website and list that it's open on the website so people know what's actually uh, what's actually the current status. My next trail report involves the CalSag Trail in Cook County. Subscriber pi 90 foo reached out to let me know that the trail is now open in Alsip. According to the Cook County Forest Preserve website, they note that there are no closures currently on the CalSag Trail. So that's good news because I want to re-ride the CalSag Trail now that it's open all the way to Alsip. I also want to check out a couple of the connecting trails and I definitely want to go by Nick's Barbecue again. My last trail report involves the Long Prairie Trail in Boone County and the Stone Bridge Trail in Winnebago County. Subscriber Woodward Mart reached out to let me know that he had finally ridden the Long Prairie Trail and the Stone Bridge Trail, so I asked him how the trail conditions were. He mentioned that there are some large trees blocking some of the trail, although other than that, the trail seems to be in pretty decent shape. He also mentioned if you were on a big heavy e-bike that it might be difficult to get around those trees, so if those trees are still down, keep that in mind. And that does it for Trail Report. If you are out and about on a trail and you see something worthy of reporting, take a video of it and reach out to me at trailnews at cynicalzombie.com. My final story involves the Fox River Trail and the closure of Island Park in Geneva. As of the date of this broadcast, Island Park is in fact open, but since we just had a bunch of rain and looking at the 15-day outlook, we're getting a bunch of rain, there's always a possibility that they'll close it again, so I might as well show you guys what the detour looked like. Unfortunately, there were no detour signs set up, so I ended up just looking at a map and figuring out the best way to get back to the trail. Most of the ride on the street is 30 miles per hour, but the closer you get to the turn, it does change to 40. And as you know, I'm not a huge fan of riding on streets. If I wanted to ride on a street, I would just ride my motorcycle. But as far as detours go, this one isn't incredibly difficult, but I figured it'd be worth showing you guys what it looks like just in case it happens again. So I wasn't sure where to put this last thing because it happened two and a half weeks ago, but we were at Buckingham Fountain for the Switch On Summer event this year. So let's call this segment Flashback. Hey guys, are you ready? Start this countdown, everybody. Ready? Come here, Tiago. Yolanda. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go switch that on! And there she goes! Tiago and Lana switched on summer. Everybody enjoy this great moment. Enjoy the city of Chicago and enjoy summer. Thanks for being here. Have a great time, everybody. And that does it for this episode of Trail News. I'll catch you on the next ride. Do you have any trail news to share? Send an email to the address below.